Respiratory infections are very common, and diagnosis of viruses such as influenza or RSV depends on collection of high-quality samples from the nasopharynx. To sample the nasopharynx, you will need protective equipment including gloves and a mask. An N95 mask, eye protection, and disposable gown may be required depending on patient sampled and local infection guidelines. You will also need a lab requisition and either a nasopharyngeal swab kit or an aspiration kit. If using the swab kit, use the smaller, more flexible swab for the nasopharynx. Ensure the viral collection medium has not expired, as expired samples cannot be processed. Always wash your hands before starting, and wear gloves and a mask to protect yourself. Patients are virtually guaranteed to cough or sneeze during this procedure. Make sure you change your equipment between each patient as well. Explain the procedure to the patient, telling them they may cough or their eyes may water. Ask about a deviated septum, and get the patient to gently remove excess mucus from their nose. Estimate the distance by measuring from the corner of the nose to the tip of the ear. It is important to insert the swab only one half to two thirds this distance. With the patient seated and head tilted slightly back, insert the swab along the base of the nose and along the medial septum. If resistance is encountered, rotate the swab slightly or try the other nostril. When you reach your pre-measured distance, rotate the swab to dislodge epithelial cells before withdrawing it from the nose. Place the swab in the collection tube, snapping the end first. Label the tube with the patient's name and another unique identifier, as will be discussed shortly. Remember, the swab must be inserted straight back, parallel with the roof of the mouth. Do not insert the swab upwards. When finished, remove your mask and gloves and wash your hands thoroughly. It is critically important that both specimen and requisition are clearly labeled with the patient's name and another unique identifier. Lab accreditation standards require that both are properly labeled and matched, or else the specimen cannot be processed. The ideal unique identifiers are the patient's health card number or hospital unit number. However, if these are not available, other potential identifiers can include driver's license number, passport number, student identification, or other government issue ID. Many people do not realize that the date of birth is not a unique identifier. Complete all parts of the requisition and specify which illness is being tested. If associated with an outbreak, include the outbreak number and call ahead to alert the lab. Refrigerate the specimen and send to the virology lab immediately. The second option is the nasopharyngeal aspirate. The tubing has calibrations to help with measurement. The syringe is attached to the tubing and is manually occluded during aspiration. Again, measure from the corner of the nose to the front of the ear and insert the tubing one half to two thirds this length along the base of the nose. Manually occlude the tubing as you aspirate. To prepare your sample for transport, empty a tube of new viral transport medium into a sterile container. Using the syringe you have used for aspiration, draw up one milliliter of this solution. Use the transport medium to flush the tubing, ensuring that you are occluding the opening. Cut the tubing and seal the vial in preparation for transport. When specimen transport is not required, for example, for collections done at the same site as the testing lab, flushing may be omitted and the tubing can be placed directly into the transport container. Ensure the lid is tightly sealed and prepare the sample for immediate transportation to the lab, ensuring all documentation is present.